Hey everyone, and welcome back to Developer Soapbox. So before I start today, I want to thank um, all the viewers and loyal subscribers out there. I, I recently reached a thousand subscribers. So, uh, you know, honestly, just want to thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate it. Um, and, you know, I, I, I really just hope that I continue to uh, create content that uh, you all enjoy. So th thanks again. Um, so because of the special occasion, I wanted to do something a little bit different in this video. So uh, what I'll be doing is I'll be showing you my personal setup for creating these videos. Uh, so it'll include, you know, I'll be going over my hardware, but uh, most importantly, um, the software, right? So especially for Linux users out there, I feel like, um, you know, if you're trying to start creating content like this, YouTube content, it, it's kind of hard to find the, the, you know, the specific software for either uh, screencasting or, uh, you know, actually editing the video and so on. So I'll, I'll be going over all of that. So hopefully that'll help you guys out. Um, you know, since I usually do screencast videos, I, I do apologize in advance for the, um, you know, for the quality here. Um, I'm, you know, honestly, I'm just using my phone to record this. I don't have any professional setup. So again, I just apologize if there's too much shaking um, and the quality isn't that great. But uh, let, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, starting out with the case, this is a uh, Versa H17 uh, from Thermotake, and it's a micro ATX case. The uh, power uh, source is also from Thermotake, and this is a uh, 700 watt unit. Um, I, I bought most of the parts for this build during Prime Day last year. Um, so the 700 watt unit was actually, um, you know, surprisingly cheaper than even like the 400 uh, and 500 watt unit. So that's what I ended up with, even though you know, I probably don't need that much power, to be honest. Um, as far as the processor, this is a AMD Ryzen 7 uh, 2700X, and it has uh, eight cores and 16 threads. So it is incredibly capable. Um, and it actually comes from AMD with this uh, really cool LED cooling fan. And it sits on top of a MSI uh, B450M Pro M2 motherboard. Um, as far as RAM, so um, I have a, a, a total of 16 gigabytes of DDR4 uh, from Ballistics. Um, so it's uh, two eight gig sticks. Uh, moving on to storage. Uh, this is a, a Silicon Power 512 uh, gigabytes M2 SSD PCI stick. Um, as far as a graphics card, I, I don't have anything fancy. I really don't uh, game on this thing or anything. Um, it, so, so it's just an Asus uh, GeForce GT 710 with uh, two gigabytes of uh, DDR5. And uh, lastly, I, I do have the unit away from the router right now. So it does have a Wi-Fi card. This is a TP-Link um, AX3000 uh, Wi-Fi 6 card, uh, which I, you know, I bought pretty recently. Um, and there's the antenna right there. And then as far as everything else, um, I do have this uh, really nice, it's a LG 34 inch ultra wide monitor. Um, to, to be honest, uh, you know, if I had to do it over again, I probably would get just like two 24 inch, um, like a dual monitor setup. It, it'd probably be cheaper than the the ultra wide and you know have even more real estate to be honest but but i do like this thing it, it is pretty nice as far as keyboard and mouse just you know really standard stuff nothing fancy you can see that super fancy uh mouse pad right there and um microphone um i, I just have you know pretty simple this is like a 20 dollar microphone but it, it, it's really good and it's actually um you know pretty much 100 percent compatible with uh linux and you know straight plug and play it's a USB microphone. And I will put the, um, you know, these items, like the, the details for these items in the description down below, uh, just in case anyone is interested. And uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started reviewing the software. And although I've mentioned that I use Linux and one of my goals is to suggest great content creation software for Linux, uh, both the screen capture and video editing self software I use uh, is also available for Windows. So this video also applies for Windows users who are looking for uh, great free apps. Uh, but the goal of this video is to show what apps I use, um, more so than showing you how to actually use them. Um, so since these are very popular apps, um, I will defer to the other excellent videos out there uh, on YouTube as far as how to actually use these apps. And I, as I've mentioned, I, I do use Linux and specifically, as you can see, Linux Mint. 
Uh, this is version 20, which as of right now is the latest. And you can probably tell from my videos, I, I love to play around with different software. And we'll say that even though I've tried probably every major um, Linux distro out there, I always seem to come back to Linux Mint. Um, I'm sure if you've used Linux, you agree that every uh, distro out there comes with some kind of quirk uh, out of the box. Um, and Linux Mint, at least for me, is the one that has the least of those quirks. And as far as the screen capture software, uh, what I use is OBS Studio. Uh, whenever I, I started making videos uh, on Linux, I initially tried out Kazam, which is also really good. But once I uh, tried out OBS Studio, um, you know, I found that a little bit more capable and that's what I stuck with. And I, I will say, say though, I, I have this issue that happens to me about, I'd say maybe about 30% of the time where I, whenever I stop, uh, I do a stop recording, it'll basically get stuck there and uh, I have to like force kill the application, which is pretty annoying, but it hasn't been enough to actually get me to switch. And ironically, I actually found out about OBS when I was uh, having a Windows 10 phase and needed free software there. Um, so the other advantage is that this also applies, as I said earlier in the video, to Windows users. And what I actually do uh, usually is I, I record the output of a VirtualBox VM. Um, as you can see, the what I'm doing here is a little bit funky, even the resolution is a little bit funky. And that's because, uh, again, I'm, I'm recording, trying to record a ultra wide monitor. Um, and I, to be honest, I'm not very sophisticated with the software. Um, I, I just do the basic stuff. But for, for a VirtualBox VM, I'm able, I'm able to exactly size the, the output window to basically you know, like a perfect resolution for uh, that OBS is able to capture. So, um, you know, it, within OBS, if I go here right now, you can see that it's screen capture, but you can actually uh, capture, do a window capture. And that's what I usually do. And I select the window to be my um, VirtualBox VM um, application window. And that has several advantages, right? So uh, one advantage of a virtual of VM is uh, you can basically set snapshots. So uh, if you're recording a video and you've installed the wrong things or uh, if something goes wrong with the install and you don't want to clean up the, the existing install, you can basically just roll back to uh, to a snapshot and, and basically clean it up, having kind of like almost like a fresh install and it only takes a couple, couple of seconds, which is... Uh, which is really awesome. And, uh, you know, when I actually created this this build, when I actually decided to do this hardware build, um, as you saw, it's pretty capable hardware, the, the the CPU, the processor being a Ryzen 7, you know, eight cores and so on. What, what I really wanted was something that was very capable uh, as a, a, a VM lab, right? So I, I wanted to basically have something that we just initially started as a VM server, right? And basically I was just going to have a bunch of VMs running on this computer um, and and essentially just remote to these machines and so on and just have a virtual uh, VM lab. Um, it, it That didn't really quite turn out the way I wanted. So I decided to just make it my, you know, my daily desktop and it's working out great in, in that sense. Now for uh, video editing, which is another important part, of this process, uh, what I use is OpenShot uh, Video Editor, which again, also available for Windows. Um, so if you're a Windows user, you, you also can use this great software. And uh, unlike OBS, I don't have any complaints about this one, uh, no, no bugs here. And uh, I'm really, again, not, not sophisticated with these tools, but this tool is super intuitive and basically allows you to, uh, you know, so drag and drop into a timeline and very easily right click on the uh, on the video and and basically be able to crop and, and and so on and so forth so it's it's really straightforward so uh you know even here for example if i wanted to um drag a few things from this actual video you just would drag in to the timeline and then let's say i wanted to crop something here i'm just right click slice and you can select what to slice and then once you slice you can basically move the the right side you know back a little bit and so on so super intuitive very easy to use uh, excellent tool all around and then lastly uh, one one thing I, I do a lot is uh, I do create uh, take screenshots for creating things like thumbnails and so on for the videos and 
as far as Windows, if you're a Windows 10 user, you have the snipping tool out of the box. For Linux, it, it, before I found this tool, I really, uh, th there was nothing that great, right? So the name of this tool is uh, right here, it's called Flameshot. And once you, you actually open the tool, it'll create a, and you can't see it right now, but it's, it's on the bottom right of your, of your taskbar, it, it'll create a, a little icon. And you can basically just take a screenshot and I'm not sure if you can actually see this, but um, but then it'll allow you to save the screenshot and, and so on, right? So it's it's very uh, very easy to use, very um, very relatable to the snipping tool. You know, something that's that's quick and easy. And I, I really love this tool so far. Again, no complaints. And, and that's my setup. You know, I, I hope you you really enjoy this video. If you're not already a subscriber. Uh, and would like to get notified when I release new content, please make sure you subscribe. And th thanks again. And most importantly, please stay s safe and healthy, everyone. Thank you.